Hello. I'm greeting you from a private terrace. Friday morning. I'm laying on my back, kicking my feet up in the air like a baby. With one hand, I'm holding the phone, and with the other, I'm drawing big circles in the air because why not? And I want to share some good news with you, but it's going to start off sounding old. Strange, perhaps. One year ago today, my beautiful, beloved, sorely missed mom rose in power, as the euphemized saying goes. And I'm not gonna lie, I've been but hurt. <laughs> I have not adapted or adjusted well for a lot of reasons. Grief sucks. Complicated grief sucks exponentially. And so I was, I guess, feeling inconsolable. And let me fast forward because I want to get to the part that is about you. Because that really is the reason for me even making this message. That first week after she died, and so it was very fresh and unprocessed. And I really wasn't absorbing everything fully because I couldn't afford to, you know. It's like my parasympathetic nervous system was activated because I had to get a lot of things done. And so at the worst time in life, there will be times where you are called to do the most with the least. And you just, and there, and you, there ain't even time to whine or cry about it. That'll come later. So, fast forward, you know, a year. Well, now is the later. And I'm feeling it. All of it in every kind of way. So, in that freshness, I was talking to a very wise friend who said something to me that was shocking and also the only thing that truly brought me comfort and consolation, but it shocked me first. And that is that she too had lost her mom and she lost her mom at a much younger age. And she said very matter-of-factly, oh, my relationship with my mom actually got better after she died. Okay, so of course that's at the least counterintuitive and then depending on your religious beliefs it might even be problematic <laughs> it might crisscross against some of the expected behavior because of the way the bricks have been laid in that belief system which is a structure a scaffolded structure so anyway this is the point i faced a fork in the road and it required a decision and i'm going to tell you about the decision because i believe it's going to be of help to many that hopefully find this and hear this in this past year and in particular in the past two months, I have had events happen that have made it absolutely clear to me that continued communication, both helpful, productive, benevolent, holy, generative, healing, foreseeing, whew, just a big capital G gift that is possible. That is my lived experience. And it flies in direct conflict with the beliefs that I was raised with. I am speaking to you from what once was a pit of despair. And because
because it wasn't just the physical loss of my mom, it was also the dissolution and the shattering of trust in every institution and established idea I ever had. At the same time, <laughs> you know, so when everything, so like normally in emergencies, you have a backup plan and and that's where belief systems come in. I'm not going to call any out by particular name because it's not necessary. The truth will land. When you find yourself in an emergency state and you need emergency help and you have come to know that things you once believed in, relied upon, trusted on, when you come to also know that they're dust, that's where this advice that I'm about to drop on you is going to become helpful. And that is that there is, I assure and promise you, that there is absolute help and fortifying support available. And it will likely cause you to re-examine precious things that you took for granted. I'm not trying to be cryptic. I, I swear I'm not. Um, I'm just trying to universalize what I just went through regarding my mom and the need to have continued communion with her and to have come from a belief system that would find that idea an aberration or unacceptable or it would be un it would be considered an unapproved activity okay and for the longest time I've gone back and forth back and forth with basically allowing myself to stay leashed to beliefs that I know are false but the indoctrination went so damn deep it's so effective it works so well that I continue to go back to these deceitful beliefs and what they are, they are no different than the elephant, the grown, like, multi-ton elephant that stays obediently tied to the tree with a rope. Because that's all that's needed. Because the indoctrination and the belief in that rope is so real, the elephant doesn't dare try to walk away. And that's all that's needed of the elephant. Walk away. Take a step with your big, strong leg. Your leg bigger than the trunk of the tree. But if you think that it's, that it's like a baseball bat, you're mistaken about the resource in you. I know this is not linear or coherent and, or um, in the traditional ways, but I, it had to come out like splatter paint because it, they just wouldn't line up like little obedient ducks. These ideas were insisting to come as they wanted. So there it is. Because I was willing to release, and it's a continuing process, because the indoctrination that started in childhood and seared my subcon my consciousness, you know, it's not going to just go... I've been actively working on this deprogramming, by the way, for almost 10 years because it's like doing surgery on yourself and then it's terrifying because of the established beliefs. It was frightening and difficult to suspend those beliefs to allow myself to be open to beneficial, productive, continued communion with my mom even though it counters certain dogma. So I made a choice, which is, that's also a consider heresy. That's what the root of that word means. A heretic, it means one who chooses. Can you believe it? I mean, when you think about like all the pejorative negative association that comes with the word heretic, and then like, that's what the sin is. That's what the guilty deed is. How dare you choose? How dare you choose? What? That is insane. But if you're caught up in the jar, you normalize it and you'll start to think, 
that there should be no resistance to evil. <laughs> I'm so sorry that I might have uh, meandered a little bit away from my, my main point. <laughs> Because all that I just said there, that was not the main point. The main point was actually to say that, to me, this is very exciting. I mean, because you can study something. Like, I, you know, I was trained in thanatology. That, the, that, that is the study of death and dying. I, and, I, and I worked for a short period of time, ages ago, as an end-of-life chaplain. And if anyone would presume that it makes the loss of your mother any easier, I got news for you. No, it does not. At least not for me, it didn't. I mean, you know, uh, I can't imagine it feeling any worse than it has, i tell you that. So, there were so many limits and low ceilings put upon ideas and experiences. There is no voice in this realm that has authority over your actual connection with life. And anything that seems to be a barrier or a block is false and may be released. In other words, some things that, you know, we are told are forbidden fruit. Some things that actually they might actually be but be not good for you, but many of the things that are quote unquote prohibited turn out to actually be good and beneficial. Two examples would be the cannabis and the sun. With uh, thoughtful, mature usage, both of those things are life giving and life strengthening, but the common understanding about those things are inverted and turned upside down, even though I think it's changing. The prevalent idea is upside down. And that's the case for so many things. So anyway, I'm actually rejoicing that on this day, this weird anniversary, I was given a choice, which was a gift. And I chose to accept the gift that presented itself to me. And if I were still in the rigid, closed mindset that trained me to fear and I was wrongly taught that certain things were not good for me or my soul, that they would not um, be life affirming. And so when you believe the wrong thing, then you spite yourself in many ways. If you are willing to consider and reconsider your beliefs, the ones that are true, they will stay intact. They won't budge or go anywhere. I would like to share a very simple belief with you that I have had for over 20 years. It hasn't changed or budged one bit, and it is so useful and so helpful. And I learned it from, from a houseplant, a philodendron, and I just noticed that it would lean as it grew it grew it was a very healthy vibrant plant and so it grew very quickly and i could tell i mean it would be evident within three or four days like its growth and it would always lean so i had to keep turning it so that it would you know kind of be balanced and straight and that showed me that it leans itself into the direction of that which enlivens it it grows toward light. It grows toward nourishment. It grows toward that which is radiant and that is warm and that would cause you to expand. That would just naturally have you want to be open. And it's literally the cause of life. That essential component of life we are so humanity is so separated from it and I mean to underappreciate something of such importance it's shocking to have 
like no reaction to someone who would want to cause separation between life and the rays of that light. I mean, how can you not take it personally? It's as personal as somebody hitting you upside the head. It's just on a macro, macro level. So I, I, I cut my hair myself and sometimes I'm like, I wish that I would sound more polished and less crazy, but it is true that it is no sign of health to be well adjusted to a sick society. So any craziness that you detect in me, it's appropriate in my book of values, which may or may not line up with your book of values. And do you even have a book of values? And I don't mean that to be saucy or rude. I think I was trying to crack a joke, but I'm grumpy, so it comes out wrong. All right, I hope I have said the point, which is that, yeah, so because I allowed myself to give up a belief that even though it was like a crutch, you know, like a crutch that you just, you're used to, it's like, but I've always walked with this, even though you know that that particular crutch, not only is it not, only is it not needed, it actually causes you to walk slower. So I put it down, and then in exchange for that, I was able to receive this whole other level and layer of understanding. I mean, my entire reality has shifted in a way that is too precious, too sacred to even try to, you know, put words on it, but in a way that it has been repeated enough and solid enough experientially that I know it's real. And it comforts my heart. And I just, I guess, because I want, so I want to say that to you, that First of all, I hope that you are a long, long way away from having any encounters of loss. But the inevitability of life says that if you live long enough, you will come to know this devastation. And if you happen to be an observer of any religion, and many of them do do this, which is they put out beliefs and if you hold on to those beliefs it will keep you blind or unavailable to an experience like I had something that is helpful there's beautiful understanding coming in and I'm open to this experience it is an experience of Divine Mother, Divine Feminine, and she who has been historically erased, but never forgotten. She's coming to life, and she comes to life through earthen vessels, through artists, healers, writers, educators, you, me. So we reverberate and we voice the new, beautiful, vibrant, sane life that we know we are entitled to. She's helping me say the truth. I hope it helps. And I want to clarify something. You know, I have an anger, and I, and I want to be very clear about who I'm angry with. Like, it's not anger at God, or my spirituality, or my spiritual life. It's anger at the fact that this entire experience has been rooted in lies. Of course, I'm mad. I feel like, oh hell. You live an entire life? I'm gonna be 52. More than half of my life is gone. And when I review it, those years and all of the decisions that were made based on bullshit, 
this is going to be the case for a lot of people who are reviewing decisions that they made in the last two years based on very high risk bullshit and there is an avoidance of saying these things in quote unquote mixed company when I say mixed company I mean when you know that the, the, the tribal talk tribal talk build up a platform you get the followers that resonate with you and, and then it's a preach to the choir thing that's typically how it is I mean like attracts like so I know that you know, that's the self-organizing principle at work. So I know that there's that's a natural outcome. But it can, a lot of times, the tail starts to wag the dog. It's like, okay, then the platform becomes sponsored. Oh, and now your tongue is tied because you're beholding to some points or some conditions on that sponsorship money, right? So I'm just saying that I am a self-funded, meaning that I work all the time um, as a freelancer, though, as a creative freelancer, and, and I... My work brings me joy, and it's proof that you can do what you are. So I'm not, I'm grateful for that. But I do that so that I can say the things that I that are in me to say without strings, you know. Or or I do have strings, but the strings are my values, they're my convictions, and they're my experiences, and I would like to share them with whomever resonates, and with and I don't want them distorted in in any way. I guess I just wanted to put that out there. Um, I miss my mom. Any of you that miss someone, I promise you, the communion can continue. You can keep learning and you can keep healing. And like my friend told me in that first week, your relationship can be even better than it was when they were embodied. And I hope that you won't let a long-held belief keep you from experiencing that.